Welcome back, everybody, to On Pit Row. Steve Ronkwitz and Charlie Turner with you live from the original Geno's Pizza and Grill. Very happy to have on our bench racing hotline the driver, the number 22 Shell Pennzoil Ford for Penske Racing. Joey Logano joins us. Uh, Joey, uh, first of all, i got to say, I was looking on your website, and there's pictures of you up there with what looks like a, a rat rod or, or an old truck up there. Is that something that you worked on? It's a very cool-looking vehicle. Yeah, a hobby of mine is kind of like old cars and something that, uh, you know, me and my dad have, um, you know, kind of, you know, always gone to old car shows and we've always had a few old cars and stuff like that. So uh, we did a, a shoot there at the old Rat Rod there one time. So um, it's actually pretty cool. We, we've um, updated it. I put a little, sh- like an old shell sign on the back. Um, so I thought that would kind of be appropriate now that Shell Pens a sponsor uh, of mine. So I thought that'd be cool. Absolutely. Are, are you? Sounds like you're like a car guy. I guess people call them. Says they're either car guys or they're not. Do you do you have a stable of cars that you like to play around with? I have a little here and there. I got a um, an old suburban. I like to. Uh, that's like my everyday driver. I don't like driving new cars. I like the old stuff a lot. So <laughs> I got that. And I got like a. Uh, I got '59 Cadillac. Uh, if you're on that one too. Well, that's really cool. I, I like the fact that you like that old stuff. That's pretty sweet. Um, Speaking of going over to uh, Penske and, and Shell Pens Oil as your new sponsor, give me an idea about that negotiation process and how long it took you to, to work that deal out. And, and were you part of that negotiating process, or did you leave that to somebody else? Oh, the, the negotiation process actually was fairly quick. Um, you know, uh, I got to talk to Roger some and, um, you know, went, went uh, with a couple of his guys, and um, we kind of put together what, uh, what works for the both of us, and, you know, off we go. So, um, you know, for me, I like being on the racetrack. I don't, you know, like thinking about all that stuff. I don't have to, but, um, you know, it's kind of part of the gig. And um, so I can work that out quick and easy and everybody's happy and get to the racetrack and win some races for it. There was a lot of talk before you went over there. You know, people were talking about the fact that, that uh, Keselowski was going to be a guy who was going to have input as to who his new teammate was going to be. And and obviously, if you're over there, and, and that being said, sounds to me like you and Keselowski must have some kind of a relationship. Did you Do you guys had had, had a good relationship before 2013? Uh, yeah, Brad and I have um, always got along for the most part, and... Uh, you know, um, slowly but surely you built the relationship. I was going around each other every weekend. Um, you park next to each other in a motorhome lot or something like that. You get to know each other. And, um, I think we race around each other enough that, um, he knows how I drove and, and I know how he drives. And, um, I feel like we could have been, you know, good teammates that way and working together and, uh, you know, together building, uh, pesky racing even stronger than what it is. So, uh, I feel like we got the, uh, the tool for it. We got the people for it and we just kind of, uh, make it all work. We're talking with Joey Logano, and how do those relationships happen? Like you say, you're with these guys, you know, for this this circus that goes on for 36 weeks. Do you just like all of a sudden you kind of you find guys that you kind of have something in common with? Is that the way those things kind of work out? Yeah, for the most part. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, um, I mean, it's just like anywhere else. I mean, we we get along with each other, but we also realize we're competitors. You know, seven in the motorhome lot. I mean, we're all pretty cordial towards each other, and uh, we'll talk about our race cars or talk about whatever. And, you know, we're, we're here, like I said, you know, 38 weekends a year. So, um, we're plenty of time to run into each other. Do you have a, a hobby? Do you, you know, I know some guys, uh, Kyle Bush, I know used to uh, like to really run, uh, radio control cars and stuff like that. What do you do to, to pass your time when you're in the motor home lives? Is there anything that the, you know, Montoya races or runs helicopters? You got something that you, uh, spend your time doing? No, not really. Pretty much here to race. So uh, <laughs> I don't really have much uh, hobbies when I'm, when I'm here at the racetrack. You know, most of the time we're, um, you know, you're pretty much have a full plate of, of racing stuff to look over and, and get ready for the weekend or, um, you know, after practice meeting with your crew chief or whatever and just spending time with your team is kind of what the, I, I do for the most part. Well, I know you're doing the kind of unusual double this weekend. You got uh, Texas on the Cup side, but you're going to Rockingham to run the truck for Keselowski. Um, I know you had success there. You you won an ARCA race at, at Rockingham. Tell me about that racetrack. Uh, Rockingham is probably the coolest racetrack ever built. <laughs> and I love it. And uh, 
so when Brad asked me to run that thing, it was, it was really last minute. He called me Sunday night when I was driving home from Martinsville, and um, he said, you want to run it? I'm like, heck yeah, I'll run it. So uh, I think it'll be fun. Um, I got Colin Pesta, he's going to practice the car for me. And then uh, when I get there, uh, hopefully we get tuned in for me. My first lap is going to be qualifying, so i got to be ready for that. So I think it'll be fun. It's a cool racetrack. I, like I said, I ran that one ARCA race there. Um, we won that one. Um, and I've done a lot of testing there, too, doing a lot of development stuff for, for JGR when I worked over there. So um, I feel like i got a lot of laps around the place, just none in a truck. You're looking for that first truck win. Um, could this be the place? Sure. Yeah, I've only <laughs> run one other truck race. So, um, yeah, I think we can. If not, we're running uh, Kansas, too, uh, the weekend after. Well, I, I guess that's not too bad if if you've only won run one other truck race. If you win this one, and doing anything at a five hundred percent, that that keep you in the major leagues hitting for a long time. That wouldn't be bad, yeah. So we'll, we'll shoot for that, but we'll, one step at a time here. I get you Texas first. Tell me about. Uh, I guess this is my uh, my my one kind of uh, entertainment tonight question. Uh, past or present? What driver would you say you're most like, either on or off the racetrack? Oh man, I've never thought of that. I always just try to be myself. <laughs> <laughs> I have I have no clue who uh, who I'd be most like on or off the racetrack. Uh, I tell you, I've never put any thought into that. Like I said, I just try to be myself, and um, hopefully myself's good enough for everybody. But um, I've never never even thought about that before. That's, that, I, I think that's a pretty good answer, actually. That uh, that you haven't had that that thought. Um, is there something that nobody knows about Joey Logano, the person? Oh, I don't know. I feel like a, a lot. I'm like out in the open. I think everyone kind of knows everything about me, for the most part. So I'm not a very secretive person. You don't like uh, eating tacos at midnight or something like? No, no. That sounds terrible. <laughs> if you like to stay up all night, it's not that bad of a deal. Sounds like a really bad idea. <laughs> yeah, well, I, well, yeah, you never know. I guess it depends on what you're eating on. You know, everybody, at least everybody, I think, knows that you've been driving race cars. You started in quarter midgets, and, and it's really cool because I, I do some stuff uh, TV-wise here in the Toledo area for, with little kids who, who race midgets. We do it on cable, and it's really cool to watch that dynamic uh, of the kids running the quarter midgets. But as, as you look back on, on your childhood and your career, is there anything you feel that you missed in your childhood because you, you focused so much on racing, or, or are you just, like, really happy with the, with everything, the kind of way it worked out? Well, I'm sure I missed out on stuff, but I really just don't even know what it is. You know, because I, I just was so focused on racing, and I really don't mind that I missed out on anything if I did. Um, you know, I was, I was homeschooled, so, I, you know, a lot of the school functions and stuff like that I didn't, I didn't do, but, um, you know, I was always going around the country racing so um that doesn't bother me at all if i'm racing it's okay so um i'm sure there was something but really it doesn't bother me i, I was doing what i love to do and i still get to do it so that's, i'm very fortunate and i understand how fortunate i am to do that we're talking with joey logano joey is, is there something on your bucket list that you want to do racing wise you know 24 hours of le mans or anything like that um i mean hey, it'd be cool to try it yeah, yeah. it'd be really cool and I, I don't i'm just a day-by-day person you know, if someone was coming to offer me that, yeah, I'd probably do it. But you know, you you know, right now I'm focusing on NASCAR and uh, you know, making sure I can go out there and try to win a championship in a sprint cup car in, in my career. So that's that's goal number one on the bucket list. Goal number one for a lot of fans who have shell saver cards is for you to win a race because then they get to save twenty two cents on gasoline, and that's one of the best uh, promotions out there. So everybody who's rooting for you to win a race because everybody wants to, to fill up their tanks at 22 cents a gallon less, let me tell you. I tell you what, me too. I want the 22 <laughs> cents per gallon. So <laughs> I'm, I'm pushing along on that one, and uh, that's an awesome program they got going on for sure. And uh, um, to, to raise awareness of what's going on at, you know, in the racing world, I think that's good for our sport and obviously good for uh, you know, all, you know, all the guys at Penske and everything there. And, um, and all the shell saver car holders that save 22 cents a gallon on Wednesday after a win or Wednesday, they call it. So the um, we're trying to get that for them. So we got the you know, any points paying races, uh, the ones we got. All right. Well, it looks to me like you're on the cusp of making that happen. Good luck to you this weekend at Texas and throughout the rest of the season. We appreciate you spending some time with us, and uh, we're uh, we're big fans. We're rooting for you all the time.
All right, great. Thanks. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks so much. That is uh, Joey Logano. We appreciate him spending some time with us here today. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we will uh, talk with Dan Beaver and get an idea of who he thinks is going to be the uh, the big winner this upcoming week. This is On Pit Row, the fastest show on Ustream TV.